tonight, President Trump is shaking up Washington and keeping promises by announcing a new executive order to keep America safe. I'm establishing new vetting measures to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. And by meeting with British Prime Minister Theresa May. The special relationship between our two countries has been one of the great forces in history for justice and for peace. Laura Ingram is here tonight with reaction. People want protection, and a wall protects. All you have to do is ask Israel. Then President Trump moves ahead to build a wall on our southern border, and Michelle Malkin weighs in. And President Trump takes aim at the abusively biased, liberal, alt-left mainstream media. The media is very dishonest. I've been saying it, I say it openly. Herman Cain will join us. Chicago is worse than some of the countries you read about in the Middle East where there, there's wars going on. All of that, plus the Commander-in-Chief calls for an end to the violence in Chicago, and Sheriff David Clark and Larry Elder weigh in. Hannity starts right here, right now. And welcome to Hannity, and we are just one week into Donald Trump's presidency, and he's already taking Washington, D.C. by storm, and that is tonight's opening monologue. President Trump, he's wasted very little time doing exactly what he said he would do once he got to Washington. That's pretty refreshing, right? A president makes promises and then actually keeps them. Now, while President Trump is quickly checking items off his agenda list, well, the mainstream media, they are obsessively focused on only three things. Crowd size, voter fraud, and of course, the women's march with Madonna and Ashley Judd. Now, what the abusively biased press has missed this past week is the huge, massive political earthquake that has just hit our nation's capital. But true to form, the mainstream media, they're too busy pushing their alt-left radical agenda. Now, instead of acknowledging and recognizing, you know, this for the first time in a very long time, that a politician is actually keeping his word and moving in terms of Washington at the speed of light, what are they doing? They're smearing. They're demeaning President Trump, and they seem to love calling him a liar every day. Now, take a look at just two of the headlines from the New York Times. Quote, Trump repeats the lie about popular vote in meeting with lawmakers, and Trump won't back down from his voting fraud lie. Here are the facts. But the Times isn't the only liberal outlet that is questioning the president's honesty. Imagine if I did this every night to President Obama. Watch this. Our new president will flat out lie to us to our faces and even put it in writing, even when we can check for ourselves and see for ourselves that he is blatantly lying. Are you using the word lie or falsehood? What are you, what are yes. you using? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I, I mean, if you have to use a, the, word, the word, you have to call it what it is. All right, did any of these so-called journalists call President Obama a liar after he repeatedly misled Americans about keeping their doctor, keeping their plan, plan and paying less? Nope, of course not. Now, all this just shows you how completely out of touch the liberal, mainstream, alt-radical left media really is. And that's why you, the American people, do not trust them. A recent Gallup poll shows that just 32% of Americans say they have a great deal or a fair amount of trust in the media, which, by the way, is an all-time low for that poll. And some polls have it even lower. And I've been saying journalism is dead for years, and what we're seeing continues to prove it every day. For example, instead of focusing on major moves that the new administration is making, promises kept, well, the media would rather cover Hollywood liberals like washed up Madonna, the pop star, and Ashley Judd losing their minds. We've got to warn you, what you're about to show, what we're about to show you is extremely graphic and vulgar, but predictable. Take a look. To our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything, F you. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. I am a nasty woman. I'm not as nasty as a man who looks like he bathes in Cheeto dust. I am not as nasty as your own daughter being your favorite sex symbol. Like your wet dreams infused with your own genes. We are here to be nasty. I'm nasty like my blood stains on my bed sheets. 
Wow. Now, the media, they'd rather focus on that incoherent nonsense from elite Hollywood liberals and washed up musicians than the fact that President Trump, well, he's been working nonstop to fix the mess that Barack Obama left behind. Now, in addition to addressing border security, immigration, regulation, Obamacare, the federal workforce, uh, spending, pipelines, confirming the cabinet and free trade, well, the president also announced an executive action to keep America safe when it comes to taking in refugees. In other words, extreme vetting. Take a look. I'm establishing new vetting measures to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. We don't want them here. We want to ensure that we are not admitting into our country the very threats our soldiers are fighting overseas. We only want to admit those into our country who will support our country and love deeply our people. Now, the president, he also hosted one of our closest allies at the White House. Here he is with British Prime Minister Theresa May. Take a look. I think Brexit's going to be a wonderful thing for your country. I think when it irons out, you're going to have your own identity and you're going to have the people that you want in your country and you're going to be able to make free trade deals without having somebody watching you and what you're doing. Now, President Trump, he's also set to talk this weekend with Russian President Vladimir Putin and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Now, we also can't forget, and what the media is ignoring, is the fact that President Trump is doing all of that while also trying to fix the broken economy. He's been meeting with all kinds of business leaders, manufacturers, union leaders, manufacturers of cars, all to create jobs. Now, this kind of immediate action is why the night before the election, in my closing argument, I explained to you, my audience, why I thought voting for Trump was a good idea. You may remember this the night before Election Day. This is a choice election. When it comes to the economy, it's Trump who will cut taxes. Hillary will raise taxes. Energy, it's about energy independence, the lifeblood of our economy, or dependence, and that would be a disaster. Obamacare, repeal it, replace it, or keep it and double down on it. I don't think that's a good idea. When it comes to the Supreme Court, hang on one second. This will impact this country for generations. Donald Trump wants originalists. Hillary wants activists, liberal, acorn, Alinskyites sitting on the court legislating from the bench. Fighting Islam, radical Islam. Do you want a commander in chief who's not afraid to call out our enemy for what they are and who they are? Refugees, do you want people to be extremely vetted to keep you safe or not? When it comes to the military, should we rebuild it or allow our military to continue its decline like Clinton will take us? What about America's role in the world? Do you want us to be first? Or not? You okay with America's decline? Educating our kids? Should we be, if we're paying the most money per capita, shouldn't we have the best test scores? We're like 18, 22, and 25, and we spend more money than any other industrialized country. Now, in my mind, tomorrow is an important day. The answer couldn't be more clear. He's working on 95% of those items, and it's only week one. Now, President Trump also told me yesterday in the White House that he intends to keep all of his promises to you, the American people. I'm going to keep as many as I can. You know, politics is tough. Sometimes you make a promise, and for some reason you can't because you have opposition on the other side that raises their hand and they make it impossible. But I'm going to keep a lot of them, and I've kept a lot of them already. Everyone's talking about it. And we're going to do things that I said we were going to do. And we're going to take care of a lot of people that were mistreated by government for many, many years. And that's uh, really how I won the election in the first place, Sean. You know that better than probably anybody. And next week, President Trump, he's ready to keep another promise by nominating an originalist from the list he gave us to the Supreme Court. Joining us now with Reaction, the editor-in-chief, Life Zet, Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated rock star radio talk show host. <laughs> how are you? Laura Ingram. <laughs> Hey, Sean, how are you? You know what the funny is? It is refreshing, isn't it, to see somebody make promises, run on promises, and then check them off almost a lot of them in week one and implement what he said he would do? It's refreshing. I think people are absolutely in shock over that. I think we're so used to Washington not performing for the people that Trump comes in and it's a flurry of, of executive orders and action on, on vetting and, and the refugees and all these other matters, and uh, reporters' heads are spinning. Uh, some of the old establishment types are grousing. But 
there's a huge amount of optimism, I think, in the country today, not just in among entrepreneurs, but just ordinary, everyday citizens who think that Washington has gotten too big, too powerful, and individual freedom has been encroached upon for too long. So I think, I think this is a really good sign of, as, as to what's happened over the past seven days. You know, the media and, like, for example, the people that were marching last weekend, they kind of seem, it, we're seeing a side of the base of the Democratic Party that maybe people didn't notice before, but it's becoming, the, the comparing and contrasting is becoming pretty, pretty glaring to me. All right, so I got this just for you. This is Democrats are teaching how to talk to real Americans. So that means, <laughs> so they're recognizing, and I'm, I'm like writing things down. I'm saying, hey, let's throw that old pigskin around. Hey, you. I, I read that a, a Winchester's a really good gun. Uh, you want to throw back some brewskis? <laughs> oh, my I mean, gosh. What, 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 how, you have to teach these Democrats how to talk to real people because well, they're not real. Well, remember, the Democrat Party used to pride itself on representing uh, the little guy, the, the working class person. And they were on the side of the ordinary American who is the backbone of our military, backbone of the workforce, backbone of, of new businesses. And instead, the Democrat Party got pulled in this identity politics direction, Sean, over the last really 40 years. And as, as they've lost power, especially on the state level, they had a good run with Obama, no doubt about it. Um, but on the state level, they've continued to lose ground. And it, it's almost like they, they go farther left instead of thinking, gee, we need to... We need to really reorient our thinking. We're missing Laura. something about America. They think, well, I'll get an interpreter to talk to some guy who goes to NASCAR and then sell that guy uh, on why we need more affirmative action. What, what That's are they going to talk work. about? NASCAR and drinking beer and baseball and the game and let's throw some back and let's th throw the pigskin around. It's so manufactured and phony. It just makes me laugh because you, you've got to be authentic and real, which I think Trump is and I think I know you are because I've known you for all these years. But isn't it revealing, though, Hillary thinks we're irredeemable deplorables. Obama thought we were bitter people clinging to our God, guns, Bibles, and religion. W weren't, th weren't those the real revealing moments about yeah, both of them? Yeah, and, and I think those comments settled in. And it, it took a while for, the, for, for all of it to settle in. But once you had a candidate like Trump who came in and said, I'm for the forgotten man and woman. I'm for, for American values first when we're going to vet refugees. Uh, we're going to do it smartly because if you come to the country, you shouldn't hate the country. If you come to the country, you shouldn't pe put Sharia law ahead of constitutional principles. And the ordinary Americans say, yeah, that's obvious. Of course we should do it that way. So until we had Trump, we really, th there, there was no single repository of leadership who could speak to the concerns of the ordinary American. But when he started speaking to those concerns, it's like the whole country said, it's yeah. about time we had someone like him. Yeah, I could see Chuck Schumer saying, hey, let's go shoot them there some ducks and throw back a few coldies. Yeah, let's, let's have some squirrel <laughs> fritters and whittle on the, on the porch. By the way, Sean, I was at the March for Life. Yeah. It was awesome. Good. It, Oh, my gosh. Good it was such a great event. And it was a huge number. It had to be 200,000 people. But more importantly, young, old people in wheelchairs, diverse crowd, African-Americans, Latinos from the Bronx all the way to from Sacramento. It was a, uh, it was such a beautiful day. You. I had such a great time. Laura, good to see you as always. And it's good to see you in D.C. as well. Thank you for being with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And up next tonight, right here on Hannity. The wall is necessary. That's not just politics. And yet it is good for the heart of the nation in a certain way because people want protection. And a wall protects. All you have to do is ask Israel. President Trump, during our cable exclusive interview, told me that a border wall is necessary. And today he spoke on the phone with Mexico's president for an hour. We'll check in with Michelle Malkin. She'll weigh in on that. Later, Herman Cain weighs in on the mainstream media bias and much more. Straight ahead on this Friday night. The, the wall is necessary. That's not just politics. And yet it is good for the heart of the nation in a certain way because people want protection. And a wall protects. All you have to do is ask Israel. They were having a total disaster coming across, and they had a wall. It's 99.9% .9 stoppage. A proper wall, not a wall that's this high like they have now. They have little toy walls. They, I don't know why they even wasted their time. If you ever saw where they build a little ramp over the wall, I don't even know why they build a ramp. They must, it's cheaper to knock it over. 
All right, that was President Trump talking about the need for a border wall. Earlier today, the president spoke with Mexico's president, Enrique Peña Nieto, for about an hour. The president was asked about the conversation during his press conference with the British prime minister. And here's what he said. Take a look. I will say that we had a very good call. Uh, I have been very strong on Mexico. I have great respect for Mexico. I love the Mexican people. Uh, I work with the Mexican people all the time. Great relationships. But as you know, Mexico, uh, with the United States, has outnegotiated us and beat us to a pulp through our past leaders. They've made us look foolish. We have a trade deficit of $60 billion with Mexico. On top of that, the border is soft and weak. Drugs are pouring in, and I'm not going to let that happen. Here to respond to all of this is the host of Michelle Malkin Investigates and CRT, uh, CRTV.com, Michelle Malkin. Um, I guess the thing that's very impressive about the first week is, number one, the number of promises that he's moved to keep. And next week we'll, we'll get a Supreme Court appointment or that a nominee that he'll name that will come from the list that he gave us before he ran for office. But on this particular issue, it's going to be a wall. He doesn't need Congress's approval. At this point, it's just a matter of money. And why do I think that Mexico is in a far worse position to negotiate? <laughs> they sure are. And they've been put on notice. Uh, every entity in the Open Borders America Last Alliance has been put on notice. And there are a lot of unhappy people. It's not just the Mexican government and uh, certainly the former president of, of Mexico, Vicente Fox, who's had a, a lot of uh, profane things to say lately about Donald Trump. But it's the Democrat establishment and all of these law-breaking, coddling mayors across the country. It's especially significant that Donald Trump has kept his promise, promise to the families of the victims of illegal alien crime. He responded to them, Sean, when nobody else would, not just the Democrats and Obama, but so many of these open borders Republicans. You know, the Republican establishment once still is shaking its head and, and scratching its head wondering why they lost well look at Jeb Bush uh, look at Mike Huckabee look at so many of these big business Republicans who turned a deaf ear to families like the family of Kate Steinle or Jamil Shaw or all of those wonderful moms from the Remembrance Project who Donald Trump didn't just listen to but featured prominently on the stage he kept his promise and commitment to them and so that's why you've got Rahm Emanuel screaming bloody murder or shame on him Cory Booker, Sean, who was mayor of Newark when those four young um, people were slaughtered by who? Members of the MS-13, Mara Selva, Trusha, El Salvador, an illegal alien gang that were harbored by people like Cory Booker. You know, at the end of the day, I don't think there's going to be a 20 percent tax on items coming in from Mexico because at the end of the day, Mexico needs us more than we need them. Isn't that the real situation here? Yeah, that's for sure. I think the other thing that is so brilliant about what Donald Trump is doing is he's going to throw this right back into the lap of the Mexican people and the Mexican government. Um, and the, one of the policy points I've always pointed out is you look at how Mexico treats its own southern border. <laughs> All of a sudden, sovereignty and walls and blockades become important. Or look at how difficult it is for people who are breaking immigration laws in Mexico to, to actually operate. Yeah. I mean, no, they get deported or put in the jail. America, they get deported or right, put in jail. Right, if only America from, had enforced it. Yeah. Right, that's right. If if only they had enforced uh, their uh, our laws the way that they had all these years. And I think that's a reminder too, as uh, as we go forward, because it's not just Democrats and the left and Obamaites and Clintonites that Donald has to fight um, when he is going forward with this immigration enforcement and sovereignty agenda. It's the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. It is so many squishy open borders Republicans who joined and we're in well, they want cheap labor. with the open borders. Democrats left. want a shift in of demographics. They do. It's Republicans about, want cheap right? labor and our national security That's is compromised right. in the process. Cheap uh, votes. Cheap votes, cheap labor, and guess what? It's law-abiding Americans and law-abiding citizens that have price. paid the price. All right, Michelle, good to see you. Yeah. Congrats on the new series. When we come back, this is up next on Hannity. They're very dishonest people in many cases. Hey, look, you have some mm -hmm. very honest ones, but, but 
I get stories that are so false and so dishonest. Mark. The president talked with me about the dishonest mainstream media and now chief White House strategist Steve Bannon. He's calling out the liberal press. He's calling them the opposition party. Herman Cain is here to weigh in on that and also tonight. The first right cited in the Declaration of Independence is the right to life. Life is winning again in America. Well, march on Washington, and they're not talking about blowing up the White House or contemplating it. Thousands of pro-life supporters gathering in D.C. for the March for Life. Vice President Pence, Kellyanne Conway, both addressed the crowd. We'll play the highlights and more straight ahead. The media is very dishonest. I've been saying it. I say it openly. I said journalism's dead, so we agree. Never, never dead, but it's, they're very dishonest people in many cases. Hey, look, you have some mm -hmm. very honest ones, but, but I get stories that are so false and so dishonest. Martin Luther King's bust. I wish, well, yeah, they said Martin Luther King's bust was taken out of the Oval Office by me. It's there. So, see, that's a very serious charge, because they're not saying the bus is taken out. What they're saying is that I'm a racist. Honestly, it's fake news. It's fake. They make things so up. Then Donald Trump, he was talking about the abusively biased liberal press, and yesterday, Chief White House strategist Steve Bannon gave a very rare interview to the New York Times, where he also challenged the mainstream media, telling the Times, quote, the media should be embarrassed and humiliated and keep its mouth shut or just listen for a while. Bannon also went on to say, quote, the media here is the opposition party. They don't understand this country. They still do not understand why Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Now, naturally, many in the liberal press, they couldn't believe that Bannon would call them out the way he did. Here's how they reacted. Yet another attack from Vladimir Putin via his lackey, Stephen Bannon. Maybe, uh, maybe they want to create uh, a ministry of propaganda out of the White House, but uh, that's not how it works here in America. These are bully tactics by somebody who's showing insecurity when he should be the most secure person in the United States of America. All right, joining us now with Reaction, Fox News contributor, former presidential candidate Herman Cain. Um, I don't agree that the press always wins. If they, if they would have won... Hillary be president because they were colluding with her the whole time. And they, yeah. they are the ministry of propaganda. Exactly. That's why I was laughing. You I got know. to be kidding me. You know, <laughs> Sean, you, you're absolutely right. You know, there's an old saying that a friend of mine used once, and that is, if you're in a hole, stop digging. The problem is, the liberal media, they don't know when to stop digging because in addition to what Bannon said about they don't understand this country, they don't understand the American people. The American people are not stupid. They're waking up to the bias. It has gone from just being slightly biased and subtle to absolutely blatant. That's what they don't get. So this is why they are still digging in that same hole. But Bannon's right. They are the opposition party. They are the, they colluded. They did everything they could do to help Hillary. They never vetted Obama. They never vetted Hillary. Uh, they never told the real story about Obama's awful, atrocious record as president. And they let a lot of things slide as it relates to Hillary yes. and email servers and broken laws and the Clinton Foundation. They let a lot of that go. And if the, I they would argue that's one of the reasons why Fox and talk radio is so successful. Absolutely. The bias shows up as a report that is either misleading or is slanted or is flat out false. Here's something that we do on my radio show periodically, Sean. Periodically, I'll give every one of my team members, including myself, there are four of us, let's all watch the nightly news. Somebody takes on ABC, one person watches CBS, one person watches NBC, another person watches CNN. And then we come back and compare notes to see how slanted, a false the report was. Every time we do this little experiment, guess what? It isn't just slightly biased, it is blatant, but they don't get it yet, and but it's they, because of the deep-seated deep -seated bitterness that they have that Trump won and Hillary lost. 
you know, it's funny, and they have been bleeding audience for years now, and they have nothing but yes. contempt for Fox and, and talk radio. What is their approval rating? I think the last poll I showed, they had a 13% approval rating. Rating, you know, a, a minuscule approval rating, and they don't seem to be learning a thing, and they don't seem to want to adjust or adapt. They seem to have doubled down on stupid, and they want to just, you know, call the president a liar every day and think that people are going to care what they think. When Morning Joe says the media is going to win whenever you take on the media, this time he's wrong. There's a new sheriff in town. Yeah. There's a new attitude in town that they are still in denial of they think that eventually they're gonna get donald trump and his administration to kowtow to the media memo to the media it ain't gonna happen yeah it ain't gonna happen it's gonna it's gonna be a great four years all right herman <laughs> king good to see you and up next tonight right here on hannity the first right cited in the declaration of independence is the right to life Life is winning again in America. Thousands gathered in Washington, D.C. for the March for Life rally. Vice President Mike Pence became the first president or vice president to speak at that rally in 44 years. Also, Kellyanne Conway addressed the crowd. That's all coming up and also later tonight. Chicago is worse than some of the countries you read about in the Middle East where there, there's wars going on. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason it's a for war it. zone. There is no reason for it. President Trump told me that the violence in Chicago needs to be stopped, and also tonight. <laughs> See that teacher screaming, die, water pistol, shots at images of Donald Trump? Well, she's now been put on leave after making that threat against the president. So when will these acts ever going to be taken seriously? And when will liberals speak out against, well, people they agree with? Sheriff David Clark, Larry Elder, they join us coming up straight ahead. Welcome back to Hannity. So earlier today, pro-life activists took to the streets of Washington to make their voices heard during the annual March for Life. Now, this morning, President Trump tweeted his support for the rally, writing, quote, the March for Life is so important to all of you marching. You have my full support. Vice President Mike Pence, Kellyanne Conway, they both addressed the marchers. Take a look. It is no coincidence that the first right cited in the Declaration of Independence is the right to life. Because of all of you and the many thousands who stand with us in marches like this all across the nation, life is winning again in America. But it is no more evident in any way than in the historic election of a president who stands for a stronger America a more prosperous America, and a president who I proudly say stands for the right to life, President Donald Trump. All right here with reaction, the founder and president of Live Action, Lila Rose, Fox News contributor, Father Jonathan Morris. Uh, Lila was on my radio show today earlier, uh, Father, and Lila, so we had this woman that you were debating, and I got her to admit she says the government should have no right to tell a woman at any time what she can and cannot do with her body. And then I said, well, what if we're one week away and you have a fully formed baby that could live on its own outside of the womb and she still stood by her position? In that case, it's infanticide and, mur and murder. Um, why do you think there's like this heartlessness, this lack of compassion? If maybe you think in the first trimester, I understand the thought process. But nine months? What was your reaction to that? I think it's clear the, heart, the heartlessness of the abortion argument. Basically, they try to make an arbitrary line of when life shouldn't be protected. And that's where it leads you. It leads you to infanticide because you can't put an arbitrary price or a line on when people should be protected and when they shouldn't, when preborn children are humans and when they're not. The reality is science tells us they're human from the moment of conception. The full DNA is there, and they just need time and nourishment to grow. And we and our laws should 
acknowledge that, respect that, and celebrate that, and support yeah. women who are in difficult situations and promote and foster life instead of claiming that abortion is somehow empowering women, which is what is so really disgusting, Sean, about what the groups like Planned Parenthood um, and NARAL have done in our country, hijacking the feminist movement with the abortion rights movement, which is just a, really a sham and against women and children. Father Morris, um, this is the first time either a sitting president or vice president, in this case Vice President Pence, actually went and spoke to the March for Life. Oh, what did how that mean? refreshing. <laughs> and w what it means to me, and I, Lila made, a, made mention of this, is that in the past it's been that, oh, religion and science were somehow in conflict. Uh, we know now by sonograms, we know by science, that it's just the opposite. And that's why it's becoming so difficult for some who have been so anti-life to say, oh no, the actual rational people would be pro-choice. No. Reason, in this case, stands with a defense of life. And I think the vice president, the president, in this case, uh, Co Kellyanne Conway, have been a refreshing voice to say, no, you know what, we're not necessarily just Republican. Yeah. Because if we think about it right now, this administration is kind of post-partisan in many ways. Right. It's, it's actually, this is just what makes sense. This is what people in the middle of the country actually believe. What about, it's what refreshing. About, what about people that think it's maybe okay in the first trimester? My answer is, well, I'm pro-choice, but if you choose to get in a bed with somebody and choose to remove every article you of clothing. You are pro-choice? I'm pro-choice. You have a lot of choices leading up to that oh, okay. act. That's, okay. You have course, a choice to use birth control. We're, we all, you have a we're choice all pro-free will. You have a choice and, to... And there's... Right. What? A lot, of it's, a lot of it's a lack of education. I mean, in the first trimester at three and a half weeks, the heart is already beating, the brain waves are already beginning to form. It's incredible how quickly that child grows in the first trimester. And most Americans, when they're polled, say that after the heart is beating, abortion should be banned. They don't realize that that's three and a half weeks. No, and I, I think we should really acknowledge prenatal development and say these are human of, beings, too, yeah. and deserve human rights. Well, I mean, that was my point. I'm pro-choice. People have a lot of choices before they decide to... To yes. have sex and make a baby and not protect themselves. I know, Father, you disagree with artificial con uh, contraception, right? The, the main point is recognition of what is sex and, and the question to you ask, mm -hmm. what is sex all about? And mm -hmm. there, if you're not open to life, well, then there's all sorts of issues that come after that. that and I think um, in, the, in our country, we recognize that life is such a beautiful thing that nobody should be against it. In other words, there should be a value placed on that which yes. is growing inside of a woman. And then it becomes, do we as a society protect that which is growing life? Absolutely. And I, right. I love the fact and, that an administration like the Trump administration, I, and we have to hold them to account on a lot of other issues of life, not just a uh, question of abortion, right. but that he's saying, I'm not necessarily just traditional Republican, but hey, listen, this is obvious. I got a break here. I want to thank you both. Appreciate it. That was pretty crazy today, Lila. I couldn't believe that. Uh, good job. Thank you. And coming up next tonight, right here on Hannity. Chicago is worse than some of the countries you read about in the Middle East where there, there's wars going on. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason it's a war zone. For it. There is no reason for it. President Trump, he's not going to sit back and let crime continue in the Windy City and also tonight. A teacher in Texas, you saw her there, shooting a water gun at an image of Donald Trump uh, saying died. Now has been put on leave after pretending to shoot that president with the gun. And will these threats be taken seriously? Should they be taken seriously? David Clark, Larry Elder, weigh in straight ahead. You were very passionate last night about Chicago and about the violence. In the course of Barack Obama's presidency, 4,000 people died, murdered, and another however many thousand were shot. Um, you might go in and help fix it if they can't fix well, it. You had many people shot last night. The news this morning is that many, many people were shot last night in Chicago. Chicago is worse than some of the countries you read about in the Middle East where there, there's wars going on. Mm -hmm. 
And there's no reason it's a war for zone. It. There is no reason for it. All right, that was President Trump during our cable exclusive interview last night talking about the crime in Chicago and how it's spiraling out of control. And unlike the Obama administration, well, President Trump is not going to sit back and watch all of this happen. Last year alone in Chicago, 762 people murdered. So far this year, there have been 239 people shot in Chicago as of the 24th of January. 40 people were murdered so far in the Windy City in the first 24 days of 2017. And earlier this week in the wake of Trump tweeting about the carnage in Chicago well some late night comedians decided to make jokes really about people dying being shot what's this yesterday Donald Trump threatened to send federal troops to Chicago yeah the weird part is not the city the musical <laughs> he's, wow he's not a fan ah. he's not a there's too much dancing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Conan was not alone. Late night host Seth Meyers and The Daily Show host Trevor Noah, they also joked about Trump's concern for the lives of American citizens. And also a Dallas teacher is reportedly placed on leave after she did this in front of a classroom of students. Watch this. Screaming die, shooting a water pistol at an image of Donald Trump, the president. Joining us now with Reaction, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, Salem nationally syndicated radio talk show host Larry Elder. Good to see you both, Sheriff. Um, what Madonna said, I, I've thought seriously about blowing up the White House. Then you got the teacher. What is your reaction to that? Isn't that a terroristic threat? Isn't that the type of thing that if I said about Obama or Larry said about Obama, we'd probably be in big trouble for? No, there's no doubt about it. I find nothing funny about black people being slaughtered on the streets of Chicago. And, Sean, I'm tired of these liberal bastards, like the ones we heard from last night, poking fun at this as if there's anything uh, to make a joke about. They would not be doing this if gays and lesbians were being slaughtered in the city of Chicago. They wouldn't be doing it if Muslims were being slaughtered in the city of Chicago. But they think it's okay with blacks because they don't need blacks right now because it's not an election cycle. So they think they can poke at them and uh, with impunity. Donald Trump is the only elected official other than me, I'll say it again, the only elected official other than me that has said anything and is demanding action to bring a new quality of life to black people living in the American ghetto. He is going to fix this and I am going to help him. You know, uh, Larry, nearly 4,000 people killed in Chicago. The overwhelming majority, about 75 to 80 percent, are black Americans. 4,000 people. That doesn't include the people that were shot. That's murder during Obama's presidency. But he didn't really comment much about this, but he did weigh in on the Cambridge police and Baltimore and Ferguson and Trayvon Martin. Why wouldn't he pay attention to, to numbers that astronomical? That's a good question, especially when you consider that Chicago is his adopted hometown. And 70%, by the way, of these homicides are unsolved. The bad guy does not get uh, held responsible for what he did. Uh, this is a, a president who's gone into the inner city. I was there with him uh, in Cleveland when he addressed the black church. You were there, Sean. Yep. He's talked about the breakdown of the family. He's talked about underperforming public schools, giving parents a, an option of getting their kid into a better school that polls show that parents want. He talks about underperforming uh, uh, of schools in terms of producing people that can compete in our economy. And he's talked about doing something about illegal immigration, uh, given the threat to jobs and the downward pressure on wages posed by people who are here illegally. And still he gets no love. Right, you can't me, win. If you don't show concern, you're racist. If you do show concern, uh, they ridicule you. You can't win. You, can't, you know, it's a good point. What do you think, Larry, about Madonna thinking seriously about blowing up the White House or a teacher in a classroom firing a water pistol screaming die die at an image of Donald Trump what should happen in those cases well it's outrageous and as you pointed out if anybody said this about Obama the Secret Service very likely would have showed up but in the case of Madonna we have to give her a little bit of slack because she did uh, finish the sentence and said I have had thoughts about blowing up the White House but I now realize that the only way of dealing with this is love so if you look at the entirety of what she said it's not quite so bad but but there's no question that people in Hollywood are freaking out over this they really thought that Donald Trump was not going to win and they still have not come to terms with the fact that there's somebody yeah. who's a Republican in the White House. Uh, guys, good to see you. And coming up, we need your help. A very important question of the day. Straight ahead.
And time for our question of the day. So what did you think of my interview with President Trump? Good, bad, ugly. We want to hear from you. Feedback always helps. Go to Facebook.com slash Sean Hannity at Sean Hannity on Twitter. Let us know what you think. What an incredible first week for the Donald Trump presidency. We will be back here Monday for week two, and it's also the lead up to Super Bowl Sunday. As always, thanks for being with us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Tonight, President Trump is shaking up Washington and keeping promises by announcing a new executive order to keep America safe. I'm establishing new vetting measures to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. And by meeting with British Prime Minister Theresa May. The special relationship between our two countries has been one of the great forces in history for justice and for peace. Laura Ingram is here tonight with reaction. People want protection, and a wall protects. All you have to do is ask Israel. Then President Trump moves ahead to build a wall on our southern border, and Michelle Malkin weighs in. And President Trump takes aim at the abusively biased, liberal, alt-left mainstream media. The media is very dishonest. I've been saying it, I say it openly. Herman Cain will join us. Chicago is worse than some of the countries you read about in the Middle East where there, there's wars going on. All of that plus the commander in chief calls for an end to the violence in Chicago and Sheriff David Clark and Larry Elder weigh in. Hannity starts right here, right now. And welcome to Hannity and we are just one week into Donald Trump's presidency and he's already taking Washington DC by storm and that is tonight's opening monologue. President Trump, he's wasted very little time doing exactly what he said he would do once he got to Washington. That's pretty refreshing, right? A president makes promises and then actually keeps them. Now, while President Trump is quickly checking items off his agenda list, well, the mainstream media, they are obsessively focused on only three things. Crowd size, voter fraud, and of course, the women's march with Madonna and Ashley Judd. Now, what the abusively biased press has missed this past week is the huge, massive political earthquake that has just hit our nation's capital. But true to form, the mainstream media, they're too busy pushing their alt-left radical agenda. Now, instead of acknowledging and recognizing, you know, this for the first time in a very long time, that a politician is actually keeping his word and moving in terms of Washington at the speed of light, what are they doing? They're smearing. They're demeaning President Trump, and they seem to love calling him a liar every day. Now, take a look at just two of the headlines from the New York Times. Quote, Trump repeats the lie about popular vote in meeting with lawmakers, and Trump won't back down from his voting fraud lie. Here are the facts. But the Times isn't the only liberal outlet that is questioning the president's honesty. Imagine if I did this every night to President Obama. Watch this. Our new president will flat out lie to us to our faces and even put it in writing, even when we can check for ourselves and see for ourselves that he is blatantly lying. Are you using the word lie or falsehood? What are you, what are yes. you using? Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I if you have to use a, the, word, the word, you have to call it what it is. All right, did any of these so-called journalists call President Obama a liar after he repeatedly misled Americans about keeping their doctor, keeping their plan, plan and paying less? Nope, of course not. Now, all this just shows you how completely out of touch the liberal, mainstream, alt-radical left media really is. And that's why you, the American people, do not trust them. A recent Gallup poll shows that just 32% of Americans say they have a great deal or a fair amount of trust in the media, which, by the way, is an all-time low for that poll. And some polls have it even lower. And I've been saying journalism is dead for years, and what we're seeing continues to prove it every day. For example, instead of focusing on major moves that the new administration is making, promises kept, well, the media would rather cover Hollywood liberals like washed up Madonna, the pop star, and Ashley Judd losing their minds. We've got to warn you, what you're about to show, what we're about to show you is extremely graphic and vulgar, but predictable. Take a look. To our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything, F you. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. I 
am a nasty woman. I'm not as nasty as a man who looks like he bathes in Cheeto dust. I am not as nasty as your own daughter being your favorite sex symbol. Like your wet dreams infused with your own genes. We are here to be nasty. I'm nasty. Like my blood stains on my bed sheets. Wow. Now, the media, they'd rather focus on that incoherent nonsense from elite Hollywood liberals and washed up musicians than the fact that President Trump, well, he's been working nonstop to fix the mess that Barack Obama left behind. Now, in addition to addressing border security, immigration, regulation, Obamacare, the federal workforce, uh, spending, pipelines, confirming the cabinet and free trade, well, the president also announced an executive action to keep America safe when it comes to taking in refugees. In other words, extreme vetting. Take a look. I'm establishing new vetting measures to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America. We don't want them here. We want to ensure that we are not admitting into our country the very threats our soldiers are fighting overseas. We only want to admit those into our country who will support our country and love deeply our people. Now, the president, he also hosted one of our closest allies at the White House. Here he is with British Prime Minister Theresa May. Take a look. I think Brexit's going to be a wonderful thing for your country. I think when it irons out, you're going to have your own identity and you're going to have the people that you want in your country and you're going to be able to make free trade deals without having somebody watching you and what you're doing. Now, President Trump, he's also set to talk this weekend with Russian President Vladimir Putin and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Now, we also can't forget, and what the media is ignoring, is the fact that President Trump is doing all of that while also trying to fix the broken economy. He's been meeting with all kinds of business leaders, manufacturers, union leaders, manufacturers of cars, all to create jobs. Now, this kind of immediate action is why the night before the election, in my closing argument, I explained to you, my audience, why I thought voting for Trump was a good idea. You may remember this the night before Election Day. This is a choice election. When it comes to the economy, it's Trump who will cut taxes. Hillary will raise taxes. Energy, it's about energy independence, the lifeblood of our economy, or dependence, and that would be a disaster. Obamacare, repeal it, replace it, or keep it and double down on it. I don't think that's a good idea. When it comes to the Supreme Court, hang on one second. This will impact this country for generations. Donald Trump wants originalists. Hillary wants activists, liberal, acorn, Alinskyites sitting on the court legislating from the bench. Fighting Islam, radical Islam. Do you want a commander in chief who's not afraid to call out our enemy for what they are and who they are? Refugees, do you want people to be extremely vetted to keep you safe or not? When it comes to the military, should we rebuild it or allow our military to continue its decline like Clinton will take us? What about America's role in the world? Do you want us to be first? Or not? You okay with America's decline? Educating our kids? Should we be if we're paying the most money per capita? Shouldn't we have the best test scores? We're like 18, 22, and 25, and we spend more money than any other industrialized country. Now, in my mind, tomorrow is an important day. The answer couldn't be more clear. He's working on 95% of those items, and it's only week one. Now, President Trump also told me yesterday in the White House that he intends to keep all of his promises to you, the American people. I'm going to keep as many as I can. You know, politics is tough. Sometimes you make a promise, and for some reason you can't because you have opposition on the other side that raises their hand and they make it impossible. But I'm going to keep a lot of them, and I've kept a lot of them already. Everyone's talking about it. And we're going to do things that I said we were going to do. And we're going to take care of a lot of people that were mistreated by government for many, many years. And that's uh, really how I won the election in the first place, Sean. You know that better than probably anybody. And next week, President Trump, he's ready to keep another promise by nominating an originalist from the list he gave us to the Supreme Court.
Joining us now with Reaction, the editor-in-chief, Life Zet, Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated rock star radio talk show host. <laughs> how are you? Laura Ingram. <laughs> hey, Sean. How are you? You know what the funniest? It is refreshing, isn't it, to see somebody make promises, run on promises, and then check them off almost a lot of them in week one and implement what he said he would do it's refreshing i think people are ac absolutely in shock uh, over that I, I think we're so used to washington not performing for the people that trump comes in and it's a flurry of of executive orders and action on on vetting and and the refugees and all these other matters and uh, reporters heads are spinning uh, some of the old establishment types are grousing but uh, there's a huge amount of optimism, I think, in the country today, not just in among entrepreneurs, but just ordinary, everyday citizens who think that Washington has gotten too big, too powerful, and individual freedom has been encroached upon for too long. So I think, I think this is a really good sign of, as, as to what's happened over the past seven days. And you know, the media and, like, for example, the people that were marching last weekend, they kind of seem, it, we're seeing a side of the base of the Democratic Party that maybe people didn't notice before but it's becoming the, the comparing and contrasting is becoming pretty pretty glaring to me all right so i got this just for you this is democrats are teaching how to talk to real americans so that means <laughs> so they're recognize and I'm, I'm like writing things down i'm saying hey let's throw that old pigskin around hey you I, I read that a, a Winchester's a really good gun. Uh, you want to throw back some brewskis? Uh, oh, my I mean, gosh. W w w w you have to teach these Democrats how to talk to real people because well, they're not real. Well, remember, the Democrat Party used to pride itself on representing uh, the little guy, the, the working class person. And they were on the side of the ordinary American who is the backbone of our military, backbone of the workforce, backbone of, of new businesses. And instead, the Democrat Party got pulled in this identity politics direction, Sean, over the last really 40 years. And as, as they've lost power, especially on the state level, they had a good run with Obama, no doubt about it. Um, but on the state level, they've continued to lose ground. And it, it's almost like they, they go farther left instead of thinking, gee, we need to... We need to really reorient our thinking. We're missing Laura, something about America. They think, well, I'll get an interpreter to talk to some guy who goes to NASCAR and then sell that guy how, on why we need more affirmative action. What, That's what are they going to talk work. about NASCAR and 